Okay, I'm making this video in August of 2020 and in answer to a question I get an awful lot, which is what sort of camera do I need to make a living? Uh, my answer is always the same, not as much as you think you do. At the beginning of June this year, 2020, I decided to um, have a look around and see what cameras were cheaply available, good cameras pro body cameras were cheaply available on eBay. And at the uh, end of June, I bought two 10 year old Canon 7Ds. How did that work out? Let's find out. Here we go, Canon 7Ds. I bought this one with a battery grip for 200 and I bought that one without a battery grip for 180. I dusted off my old APS-C lenses and uh, the FS lenses and went shooting. I shot 12 action shoots, equestrian action, I shot five portrait shoots, equine portraits, and I shot a whole bunch of TFP shoots as well. And I only used 7Ds throughout. So how did I get on? Now in this footage you can see that I'm shooting fast moving horses on the beach in very harsh light. were totally satisfactory. I also shot a whole bunch of portrait shoots. Uh, normally I would use a full frame camera for this, uh, but I decided to go with a 7D. I mean, this wasn't a gamble for me, to be honest with you. It wasn't like, you know, oh, I'm gonna buy two 7Ds and wing it, you know? I know they're up to the job. I know what I can earn a living with. Remember, I used to shoot film and uh, very basic cameras and you could earn a living with them. So these, these, these are a luxury compared to that. Although they do have a great disadvantage over modern cameras that you have to bear in mind. But we'll talk about that in a minute. It's advantages for action work or sports work. It's great. It's got eight frames per second burst, if that's what you're into. It's fully environmentally sealed although that relies on the a ceiling on the lens. It's got a metal chassis on it, so environmentally sealed. The controls are very rugged. Good buffer depth on it as well. Would I recommend it for work? Yes, obviously I would. You know, I'd have no problem recommending this for someone who wanted to go to work and build their photography business on nothing. You can do it. If you're into Nikon's D7100, if you're into Canon's 7D, you cannot really go wrong. It'll get you started. And to be honest, if you can't get a shoot in a 7D, you're not going to get a shoot in a, an R5. Now the disadvantage, let's get to the big disadvantage of these, and it is a big disadvantage for some, and that is it's a 10 year old sensor. so. ISO performance is dismal. It's absolutely dismal. You need to know how to expose for an image, for a scene. Because if you don't, this camera will punish you. When you get the images into Lightroom or whatever, you're going to see noise and loss of detail like you've never seen before if you have to raise your exposure. And if you have to lower your exposure, you will find blown out highlights where you never expected them. It's a 10 year old sensor, bear that in mind. Now, that is obviously a disadvantage if you are not very good at exposing yet. But think positively, it's actually an advantage, particularly for a new photographer, because a new photographer can go out, a new photographer with money can go out and buy any of the new cameras, um, any of the new DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, and get an exposure they can work with. I mean, you know, four stops underexposed, put it in Lightroom, lift those shadows, um, and you've got a, a usable image most of the time with modern sensors. Do that with this and you'll see noise patterns that you never could believe would exist and you've got a dead image, it's useless, you cannot save it. Overexpose it, same thing. If there's a sky in there or reflections on oily skin like you've got with me, uh, forget it. It's going to be blown to hell. So it makes you learn exposure. It makes you get it right. So for a beginner, that is an, a, a very good lesson to learn. But anyway, forgetting all that guff, um, yes, it'll do the job. 
it's an option. Bear in mind the sensor technology has come on a long way. Now I'm not saying it's good to use a bad camera, and it's not a bad camera, this is a good camera. Um, I'm not saying, you know, oh, you know, you must shoot with cameras that are, you know, creativity comes from limitations. And I'm not going to say all that, I mean, all that's true. But if you can afford a better, more modern camera, then by all means go for it. Okay, so these have one card slot. It's a CF card, so they're a bit more robust. But they have one card slot. Uh, that doesn't worry me because I always shoot, always shoot with two bodies. Why do I always shoot with two bodies? Well, it's not just the card going bad that bothers me. It's the camera going bad or something weird happening. I mean, uh, well, four years ago, I dropped a 1DX in the ocean. I was shooting horses and I dropped a 1DX in the ocean with a 70 to 200 2.8L lens on it. Now, luckily, I had a filter screwed on the front of the lens, so that sealed it because the rest of it's sealed. It's got a gasket and it was a 1DX, uh, a classic, a Mark 1 1DX. Picked it up immediately, uh, lobbed it up onto the beach, landed, landed in the sand. I just wanted to get it out of the water, threw it away and carried on with my other 1DX. Carried on, got the rest of the shoot in that. And then I walked out, picked it up, <laughs> scraped the sand off the lens, carried on shooting with it. Okay, so when you've got a tough body, and this is one of those, you can survive, which is another reason why I like shooting old cameras. But I'll always shoot two bodies anyway, always, in case something goes wrong. Okay, so let's talk about resolution. 18 megapixels. Wow. 18 megapixels will do pretty much everything that most working photographers are going to need. If you're a wedding photographer, you know, event photographer, me, equine photographer, you'll get everything you need with 18 megapixels and print as big as you are likely to need. I mean, I routinely with the 1DX printed 30 by 20 and bigger, four foot, no problem whatsoever. What matters more is, is the shot well shot? Is the exposure bang on? Is your focus nailed? Are you, are you holding it steady? Basically a well shot image from an 18 megapixel and a well shot image from a 12 megapixel 5D Mark One will print as big as you want. If you think that's not so, then try it, prove it to yourself. It is perfectly normal and reasonable to expect that from an 18 megapixel camera or indeed a 12 megapixel camera. Will I sell these on now? No, I won't. I'm going to keep them because um, they're two very good reliable cameras. One has only got, um, this has got 12,000 shots on it. That one's got 7,000 shots on it. So they've both got plenty of life left in them yet. And if someone ever nicks my other cameras, I can still go to work. Look out for my next working camera gamble. Of course it's not a gamble, but I knew they would do the job. I wouldn't risk my clients otherwise. So yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you later.